Bess peered down into her cup and then thrust it back at the girl who'd handed it to her. Could I get just a smidge more marshmallow? More marshmallow? Her cousin George asked, swirling her plastic spoon through her own pile of strawberry cheesecake explosion. If you get any more marshmallow, Bess, all of your organs are going to stick together. My boyfriend Ned cleared his throat. I'm pretty sure that's not how the human digestive system works, he said, watching as the ice cream scooper handed the cup back to Bess. But you are going to have the mother of sugar highs. Bess tilted her head at him. After eating an ice cream sundae, you don't say. She smiled at the ice cream scooper, plunged her spoon into a fluffy cloud of marshmallow, and shoveled it into her mouth, closing her eyes in pleasure. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. Besides, she opened her eyes. We're celebrating here, at least Nancy, George, and I are, aren't we? We sure are, I agreed, stepping up to the counter. Can I get a strawberry sundae with Oreo chip and whipped cream? Ned smiled at me. Good combination. Thanks, I said. I spent all winter planning the ultimate sundae combo. Bess took another bite of her sundae and moaned. And we can spend all day eating ice cream now, guys, she said happily. Because as of midnight last night, it's officially summer. For 12 beautiful, short weeks, Ned put in. Bess glared at him. Buzzkill. And then comes fall, Ned said, taking a lick of his own rocky road with sprinkles cone. Then winter. It'll be snowing before we know it. My point is, Bess said, raising her spoon in the air, that we girls have three months of gorgeous weather stretching ahead of us. Three months. What are we going to do with it all? I took my sundae from the ice cream scooper and handed over my money. Um, if I were to guess, I'll probably end up solving a mystery or something. You're so predictable, Nance, George scoffed, rolling her eyes. I took a bite of my sundae. Ooh, it was perfect. I'd done it. I'd created the ultimate sundae. I don't know, I said, shrugging at George. Maybe I'll take the summer off from solving mysteries. Take up knitting or something. Now it was Bess's turn to roll her eyes. What? I asked. I'll believe that when I see it is all, she explained. How are you going to manage it? Mysteries tend to find you, you know. I think the only way you could pull that off is to stop talking to people at all. George nodded, chewing on a nugget of cheesecake. Or go on a really long trip, she added. Where you don't speak the language, Ned put in, pausing from licking his cone. You guys, I said, getting frustrated. I'm serious. I mean, kind of. You want to stop solving mysteries? Bess asked, looking incredulous. She slapped a hand over my forehead. Are you feeling okay? I dodged out from under her. Not permanently, I said. But it might be nice to just relax this summer, enjoy nature, maybe play some sports. I expected Bess to laugh again, but instead she looked thoughtful. I think George might be right, she said slowly. I think to do that, you might have to leave town. And I have an idea. She put her sundae down on a nearby table and then swung her purse off her shoulder so she could start digging in it. Normally, this was a 20-minute process, minimum. So George and I looked at each other and sat down to continue eating our ice cream. But just as I had the perfect mouthful of strawberries, ice cream, and whipped cream, Bess pulled out a glossy brochure and waved it at me.